Alice? Here I am. Before this video starts, I want to mention something very important right now. The hate crimes against Asian people have grown exponentially and it's time to set an end to Asian hate. Please visit the resources that are listed in the description and educate yourself on the situation. If you can, please donate. Thank you very much. Hello everybody, today I want to discuss a topic that has been prevalent for years. I want to talk about the formula to success for K-pop groups and how the newly debuted group Stacy changes this and therefore changes K-pop altogether. Stacy girls, it's going down. Stacy is a six-member girl group under High Up Entertainment that debuted on November 12, 2020, with their first single album Star to Young Culture. This phrase is also the meaning of their group name and defines their goal. Part of Stacy are the members Shion, Sumin, Seon, Isa, Jay and Yoon. At the time of making this video, their debut music video gained 15 million views on their YouTube channel and 21 million views in total if you add the views from the channel Won The K. The song peaked at number 21 on the World Digital Song Sales Chart and at number 17 on the Weekly Gaon Album Chart. Stacy managed to sell more than 34,000 copies, making Star to Young Culture the best-selling debut album by a female group in 2020. As you can tell, Stacy's debut was very successful. On March 24th of 2021, it was announced that Stacy would be coming back with their second single album called Stadium on April 8th. High Up Entertainment was launched in August 2017 by the producer duo Black Eyed Pilsung, short BEP, and CJE and M respectively. BEP decided to buy the other half of the company in 2018 from CJE and M, making them the only owners of High Up Entertainment right now. In February of 2019, High Up debuted their first boy duo named 415, and in November of 2020, they debuted their first girl group Stacy. Black Eyed Pilsung is a music production and songwriting duo made up of Rado and Choi Kyung Sung. They teamed up in 2014. BP have produced countless hit songs such as Sister Touch My Body, Miss A Only You, Twice Like U R, Cheer Up, TT Likey and Fancy, A Pink I'm So Sick, Ung Ung and Dum Dum, Changa Roller Coaster and Gotta Go. Both producers have been active even before their time as BEP and have worked with other big names such as Shin Sadong Tiger. Before talking about the way Stacy changed K-pop, it is important to take a look at how groups and artists found success in the industry beforehand. K-pop is extremely diverse and therefore a lot of artists can coexist and have a decent sized fan base to support them. A so-called success formula that has to be followed and that grants instant success is not possible, especially because the way people consume music has been changing so rapidly over the past years. However, as almost all K-pop artists follow the certain system of auditioning, training and then debuting, there are basics that have to be given to be granted success. I will be focusing on the company's part here as idols themselves mostly have little to no control over how they are being promoted as artists at the beginning of their career, which is very crucial for their later path. There are three main factors that are most important these days, which influence each other. The most important thing is obviously money. You cannot be successful if you don't have enough money. Apart from very rare exceptions such as BTS or GFRIEND, a company normally needs huge funds to debut and continuously promote an artist. Pushing out multiple releases back to back and having the money to properly promote the artist is fundamentally needed to reach success. Depending on how much money a company is able to spend on the artist they are debuting, basic things such as proper mixing and mastering of the song or the quality of the music video can take a major role in the success of a debut. Another factor that has become important over the past years is standing out of the mass. The easiest way to stand out is coming from one of the biggest four companies in South Korea, YG, JYP, SM or Bikid Entertainment. Artists debuting under these companies are immediately noticed by the public and loved by many. Even though these companies have enough funds to promote their groups properly, the sheer fact of them debuting under one of the big four makes them stand out of the crowd. 
Another way to stand out is having creative or provocative concepts or a multinational lineup. Groups like Rain Pop or Pink Fantasy have shown that concepts can be weird and diverse. The group Stella gained attention for their overly sexual concepts. Standing out is a key factor of their marketing strategy. However, taking it too far can be dangerous as the artist can be faced with backlash, therefore destroying the actual intention. Debuting non-Korean members like the soloist Lana or the two non-Korean members of Black Swan will definitely bring attention to these groups, even though it can be negative attention. However, compared to the earlier years in K-pop, just having enough funds to continuously promote an artist and putting on creative and unique concepts does not make for success anymore. There are simply too many companies that have enough money. K-pop as a music genre has fans all over the world, making it a global phenomenon. Companies have long noticed this trend and have adapted their marketing strategies accordingly. Targeting the international market rather than the Korean one alone simply opens up the artist to a much bigger audience. A lot of the artists that are debuting these days are quite obviously targeted at the international market specifically rather than only focusing on the Korean market. This can be seen, amongst others, through more and more released English versions of their songs, having more of their lyrics be sung in English, having English subtitles on their YouTube content and especially having a group member that is fluent in English. All of these things make it easier for a group to be noticed and appreciated internationally and therefore being exposed to a much larger market than the Korean one alone. One specific approach was presented through the debut of the rookie group Secret Number in 2020. The so-called global group has Korean, Korean-American, Japanese and Indonesian members, which makes fans from these respective countries have interest in the group as they feel represented. The companies targeting these specific countries as their market. This push onto the international market has become common practice, but has been taking on more and more extreme forms in the past years. Another factor that has been seen quite a few times in recent years is unpredictable occasions. A simple fan cam made the group EXID go viral and have a successful career. A compilation video by a fan made rolling by brave girls peak on all Korean charts and have major achievements. These things, however, are extremely rare and cannot be planned and therefore aren't part of a success formula that's supposed to be largely applicable. The three presented factors that a company can influence are the most important ones for a successful future for the artist. However, as the market is so oversaturated, even following those three things does not guarantee success anymore. In the year 2019 alone, 178 new acts debuted, and almost as many followed in 2020. With hundreds of groups out there who release music frequently, new groups have to gain attention fast at all costs. The extreme oversaturation is leaving marks on groups from medium to big sized companies as well. An example would be the current debut of the group Try B, a group backed by a universal music group and public records for international promotions. These rookies are backed by one of the most wealthy and impactful music companies who are clearly targeting the international market, yet were overlooked and have only managed to sell over 1.7 thousand copies of their debut album Try B Da Loca. This shows that even groups who are backed up by wealthy companies are overshadowed by the mass of other K-pop acts active at the same time. Although the target audience grows consistently, there is still a chance that despite having money, a creative concept and having targeted the international market, an artist won't be successful. It has gotten harsher to gain a following, mainly due to the fact that people can and will move on quickly because there is just so much content to consume. The mass of new K-pop fans is still not enough to support the hundreds of K-pop acts that are active right now. Also, with more fans, there comes even more new artists that want to try their luck in the industry. Even if a release is successful, there is no certainty that the follow-up will be. This is making the debut of a new artist a gamble for the companies behind them. There will obviously be die-hard fans of artists that will keep supporting them through everything. However, apart from the top groups, these fans are not enough to support the artists of their own. They need the attention of the mainstream public to survive, and that has gotten so much harder. That's why even wealthy companies need to come up with different ways to promote their artists and make them gain a stable following. It's always been impossible to have a formula that brings immediate and sustainable success. However, influence and money were the main tools for a successful career which worked in most cases in the past. Now that so many companies out there have the resources to promote their groups heavily and so many new K-pop acts are active, this is not a standout factor anymore. 
people are becoming more critical of what's being released and therefore more picky of what they support. Putting immense amounts of money into an artist does not bring success anymore. There has to be another reason for the fans to support the artist rather than seeing them on every TV program. This creates a kind of instability, as a successful debut could be followed up by an overshadowed comeback. Everything that is being put out has to be liked and be well made. If it's not, people will move on to music that is, because there is plenty of that. Their debut of Stacy was different in many ways. The group debuted under an unknown company. High Up Entertainment definitely had the funds to support the girls, but the lack of knowledge about the company was a disadvantage, as there was no publicity just because of the company's name. A key factor why the interest in this group was so high was the producer duo that is backing them. As stated before, BEP are known to have produced countless successful songs that are loved by the mainstream public. Having a group debut with only BEP songs in their discography was something completely new. In this oversaturated scene, where everybody just moves on if they don't like the follow-up release, the debut of Stacey provided stability. BEP are hitmakers, and it was clear that Stacey would not have bad songs in their discography. This is one reason why people were so excited. The group's future would be bright, music-wise. People trust the producer duo to make amazing songs for the group, creating some sort of stability in this fast-paced industry. Therefore, pouring all of their love, interest and money into this group will turn out to be the right decision, they hope. To be honest, this all remains a theory. Looking at countless comments and talking to a lot of fans, many of them are so ecstatic about Stacy because they can anticipate new amazing releases with almost certainty. In addition to this factor, the marketing strategy behind Stacy's debut was fantastic. K-pop music has always been made by international artists, producers and songwriters. Some Koreans even see that as a flaw of the genre, as it is not Korean pop music when the music is made by non-Korean people. BEP are known in Korea as the hit makers of K-pop. Them being well-known celebrities brings attention to the debut of the group. On top of that, BEP calls the members of Stacey their daughters, further contributing to the familiar aspect. BEP's songs are loved by the widespread public and Koreans love them as a producer duo. That's exactly what BEP and their marketing team use for their strategy. Stacey's debut was almost entirely targeted on the Korean market, something that's quite rare for debuts these days. As all of the members are purely Korean, this goes against the usual marketing strategy of using non-Korean members to branch out into their respective home countries, though member Sheehan seems to be able to speak fluent English. All of the members are also extremely young, something that is very important in the eyes of Korean fans. They are also insanely pretty according to the Korean beauty standard. Visuals are considered to be more important in Korea than internationally. Prior to their debut, Stacey appeared on the YouTube channel One The K. Their promotional videos consisted of a dance cover of famous Korean groups such as Blackpink, BTS and Stray Kids, as well as vocal covers of songs by Twice, Blackpink and Red Velvet. These covers specifically focused on Korean releases, showing respect to Stacey's seniors and further indicating that they would focus on the domestic market. Only some of the members themselves were known to the public before debut. Amber Sion was a known child actress and even won awards. She is also the daughter of a Korean celebrity. Her image was very positive. Sion and Soomin were both former Plan A trainees. However, there's hardly to no footage of them before joining High Up Entertainment. Member Isa is a former Hack Enter trainee but she only appeared in a few of their YouTube videos. Member Yoon and Jay were completely unknown to the public. The debut of Stacey, specifically the song So Bad, perfectly captured the Korean music trend of Korea at the time. Having a retro concept was nothing new, even Western artists started doing that in 2020. However, having synth wave as the prominent genre with staccato verses, something very popular in K-pop, along with drum and bass, fit perfectly into the Korean music scene at the time of their debut as it combined the current trend with typical K-pop elements. The group themselves described their debut as a new genre of music called Teen Fresh, meaning to highlight the group's unique individual vocal colors. The song itself consisted of a lot of Korean, almost the entire chorus is in Korean, something quite rare in recent years of debuts. Stacey also went to countless Korean interviews and variety shows to show their charms and promote their group. As their promotional period for So Bad came to an end, Stacey did a special stage for New Year's celebration covering a song by Girls' Generation. This again showed Stacey's respect towards their seniors, something that is considered to be very important to Koreans. 
As for international promotion, they added English subtitles to all of their videos, went to Simply K-pop to promote broadcasts that is also focused on international fans, and went to the channel Rolling, which is also focused on international audiences. Apart from that, Stacey's promotion were focused on Korean news outlets. All of the promotional work did show effect, as Stacey's debut was absolutely successful. Their brand reputation jumped up to 8th place in December of 2020 and jumped back up to 26th in March of 2021, almost half a year after their debut. Their music show appearances reached up to a million views and even fan camps of individual members managed to reach up to half a million views. They also went viral on Korean media websites multiple times for resurfing childhood pictures and ending poses of their music show appearances. Stacey were quickly considered to be an unexpected monster rookie. An MR removed video of one of their live performances also went viral as it showcased their talent at live singing. They also recently came back with their second single album called Stadium on April 8th. Their new album Stadium sold over 10,000 copies before the song release and over 20,000 copies in the first three days. The group is gaining a strong following that is willing to stay. Stacey is currently on the way to become one of the leading girl groups for this generation of K-pop. They did not debut under a known company. They don't have members to showcase their talent on a survival show like Produce 48 beforehand. Apart from Sheehan's participation in dramas and one music video cameo, their members were unknown to the public. Stacey's success is mostly to be thanked for their song So Bad, and that is something quite new. Some people even call it producer privilege. People are supporting this group with high hopes for good music. There's obviously a lot of love for the talented members, but a big part of the success of this debut was due to the fact that their song was immediately loved by the public. And that, on the other hand, happened because BEP read the current music scene perfectly and produced a song that captured the heart of many fans instantly. Them having the creative direction over their debut and therefore being able to realize the vision for these girls to the fullest did them a big favor. The advantage of a good song combined with a focus on the Korean market and the persona of BEP and the talented members led to a great success of a debut. And even more importantly, it led to trust in new releases as therefore strong support for the group itself. The trust in the producers and in the future of this group provides stability, one that is much needed in the K-pop scene in recent years. All there's left to say is good luck, Stacey. Thank you for watching.